Welcome to the Norman Nick Show. I am Norman. Today we're going to go over two videos of wanted criminals that have active rewards. So grab your popcorn and let me show you what these rewards consist of and if they're even worth going after. The FBI is asking for the public's help tonight, finding a man who may be hiding out in the area of Camp Verde and considered armed and dangerous. He's accused of shooting an officer last night at the Yavapai Apache Reservation. The officer remains in critical condition tonight. Fox 10's Brian Webb live tonight near the scene with the latest. Brian. Well, guys, the FBI is in charge of the investigation because the shooting was on the Indian uh, Native American Reservation. We are getting some help from the Yavapai County Sheriff's Office. There is a SWAT team here, plenty of guns, and even a drone that they are using today. Back behind me, this is a checkpoint where they've been inspecting cars for much of the day. And then down below, you see this housing area where today most every home gets a knock on the door from the FBI. And just late today, we received the name and photo of the injured officer, Preston Brogdon, seen here with his wife. He's a five-year veteran of the Yavapai Apache Police Department in critical but stable condition tonight. We're told he's surrounded by his family, friends, and fellow officers as the search for the shooter stretches into the evening hours. The search area, a rugged patch of desert dotted with trees and homes nestled into the Verde Valley. The FBI believes the man they're looking for is out there somewhere. This morning it was pretty bad. There them trying to bang down the door. Uh, my son was all scared. But there are only two ways into the Toonley housing area by blacktop, and nobody gets out without being searched from bumper to bumper in case the suspect has tried to hitch a ride. So you know I did my homework on this story, right? And I checked out his background, and it's extensive. It just keeps scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. I haven't even looked at the details of any of these crimes to tell you that this guy has been on a spree since 2002 with some incarceration, as you can see here. But he went from petty to violent, like, whoa. So with that being said, that's not really what caught my attention about this story. They just asked who, who was all in our vehicle. If it was just us two, they opened the back door to look inside. Shots rang out around 7.30 Wednesday night. Authorities say officers got into an argument with a man who opened fire as he fled on foot. One officer was hit and flown to a nearby hospital with serious injuries. And this is the man they are looking for, 39-year-old Valentin Rodriguez, possibly part of the local Native American tribe. And officers and agents are going door-to-door -door day and night to find where he's hiding and flush him out. It's crazy because we just live right there, you know, and for something to happen like this, it's, I don't, I don't know, it's pretty scary. Yavapai County Silent Witness is offering a $10,000 reward for information leading to an arrest. The phone number on your screen there, 1-800-932-3232. At this time, the FBI is calling Rodriguez a person of interest, someone they would like to talk to, not a suspect. They are also asking anyone in the area to report any suspicious activity. What caught my attention about this story was the fact that this letter was put out in just a paper that I found in my sleuthing and no retraction has been, been done or no update has been done to say that the reward is no longer available. Or is it? For immediate release, update, body found in Verde River last week confirmed as Valentin Rodriguez. Prescott, Arizona, March 3rd, 2022. An autopsy confirmed the identity of the body found February 26th 2022 in the Verde River near the Tunnelly River crossing as that of Valentin Rodriguez, the suspect wanted in the February 9th shooting of Yabapai Apache Police Sergeant Preston Brogdon. The official medical examiner reports all still pending and the FBI is continuing its investigation. No further details are available at this time. So what does that mean? So that means that as they said in that interview that he is wanted for questioning so was there more than one gentleman in that vehicle when that officer was shot because something's not adding up well i know why the fbi is involved is because it's the it's it's the uh, uh a, a reservation and they're not governed they're governed by federal law 
not by state law because they're their own little island of a nation you know they're not the same as like maricopa county or whatever uh but with that being said with uh tribal law and federal law um we're kind of in the dark about everything that goes on but as far as this story there's a number to call to find out if the reward is still available and if you have information please do so that number to call is going to be 928-649-7142 and you're going to ask for chief nathan I would just ask for Chief Nathan, if you can pronounce that last name. I don't want to screw it up. But, yeah, you're looking at the Yak Yavapai, the Yavapai Apache National Police Department. Now for the second story. The FBI is still, after all these years, releasing this reward. And I don't necessarily agree that he should be on the list. But comment below and let me know how you feel about it. 911, where's your emergency? I heard a shot, uh -huh. a lot of screaming, another shot, no more screaming, and another shot. This man, Eugene Palmer, is the newest addition to the FBI's 10 most wanted fugitives list for allegedly murdering his daughter-in-law. Palmer allegedly hid in the nearby woods and then ambushed Tammy Palmer moments after she walked her two children to the school bus stop. Detective Michael Kruger of the Haverstraw Police Department says Palmer allegedly fired three shots at Tammy, who tried to escape the flying bullets. The final shot was point-blank range right in the chest as uh, she was laying on the ground. A neighbor called 911 when it happened back in 2012 in Stony Point, New York. Listen to an excerpt. Palmer's green pickup truck was found the next day hidden in a berm near Harriman State Park. FBI agent Andrew Fisher. Eugene Palmer is 80 years old at this point, but that doesn't diminish the nature of the crime and how violent it was. And the bottom line is that there are two children who no longer have a mother. Palmer is a hunter, a car enthusiast, and is interested in dirt track racing. He has a deformed thumb. He has ties to up state New York and Florida. A reward of up to $100,000 is available for information leading directly to Palmer's arrest. So as a former paralegal who used to work in the finance industry, my job was always try to find or basically follow the, the money. So when I look at these investigations, that's basically what I do. And then the second thing I look for is mental health issues such as emotional instability, uh, where they think entitlement or fairness is involved as far as like uh, parental rights or something to that effect. Um, but as far as this is concerned, when I follow the money, now I know the FBI probably already did this and if not, it's me again. So. As you can see, he only had one son, according to Wikipedia, and I confirmed that in public records. Now, if you look at everything that's involved in this case, this family owns a lot of property, especially a lot of property in undeveloped land. And I haven't even dug into the family history as far as the political effects, the local effects, the um, as far as real estate effects of what grass this family has for its future as far as its legacy but i do know the grandfather wanted to protect this property and he knew this property inside and out because he was a woodsman now looking on the map here there's at least 10 properties that he owned and i confirmed that by looking up each one for the years that they were involved so as you can see here all of them are right around the area of where um, the victim was uh, where her home was and where the elementary school was located where the children uh, probably went to school so as far as me putting everything together who who benefits from the longevity of the property if there was an upset in the marriage which they do not discuss in any of the public records or any of the news broadcasts as far as what happened with the wife and what triggered this man to slaughter this woman just like that because that was an emotional kill that wasn't just a that that was a you knew her and there was something personal so i believe and this is just from following the money and with the lack of evidence showing us being covered over is there was probably a marital issue between the son-in-law and the and the victim or, or the the son and the victim and grandpa got a hold of it and he didn't want that property going to a different line of 
anything especially a woman and going to you know him possibly losing so whatever was going on i think the fbi needs to look at the son john and find out what his relationship was to make the father the, his father get so emotionally charged to kill his wife like that food for thought some would like us to believe that eugene palmer fled into the park and died in a location where his remains would never be found but we believe differently we believe that Eugene Palmer is still alive. On September 24, 2012, Tommy Palmer walked her two children to the bus stop in Stony Point. It was the last time those children would see their mother alive. As Tammy Palmer walked back to her home, her father-in-law, Eugene Palmer, laid in wait. He then murdered her firing several shotgun blasts into her body. He then fled the scene. A manhunt was instituted that day. 911, where's your emergency? I heard a shot, uh -huh. a lot of screaming, another shot, no more screaming, and another shot. So I can hear it in the comments now. Well, if this guy is so old and he killed himself out in the woods somewhere, why doesn't the FBI receive the reward or at least concede to take him off the list because he's like 83 84 years old now well there's a chance one he may still be alive uh two as far as the um taking him off the fbi list i would not know who would actually be in charge of doing that and who would consent what would be the consensus or the group of people that would decide that to happen um at this point though as far as call to action to get that hundred thousand dollars for all you hunters out there and all you treasure seekers i would go sniffing around in the woods because i bet you that's where he went off to because there's no way in the last whatever years that he survived not only that winter the the winters that you guys have had up in new york but i'm sure the fbi has tapped the whole family and he has not been able to run from property to property, especially 80-something years old in the woods trekking it. You would have to be one hell of a woodsman. And if he is, that's all the more reason to go look and track for him. So for all you dog the bounty hunters, you really want to impress somebody, get on a YouTube channel and go find this man so we can bring justice. And with that being said, if any of this information that you have uh, touches a string as far as uh, parental rights and you feel like you need to do something before a crime happens and you feel as a father that you not being around could possibly be an issue, I do have a course for free that you can do that will allow you to, within 24 hours, no matter what state you live in, to file for custody of your child or grandchild within 24 hours. That way you can get the ball rolling and everything started, no obligation, whatever. All you got to do is just send me your email so I can give you the link. That way you can find out whatever state you live in, how, what's the process without getting an attorney within 24 hours, why you need to explain to a judge why you need to be the best interest of this child or why you need to be involved in this child's life and what, why it's in the best interest of the child.